<laughs> have you got some like baby squirrels now? Yeah, they're, well, they're nice. The next day I saw like four baby squirrels and a big squirrel scuttling around. And I felt really oh. sad, but equally you just can't. They'll you find can't. somewhere They'll else. They'll find somewhere, somewhere else. else. Yeah. Yes. Hello and welcome to the Sherlock's team podcast with me, Heather. Today I'm joined by Becky Hull, Georgina Blasky and Sherlock's contributor, India Semi. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. How are you? Yeah, good. good Not bad. How was everyone's weekend? Becky, you had a couple of days off at oh, the end of last week. I did. I had Thursday and Friday off, which actually I was saying sometimes is more stress than it's worth. But actually, when you get to it, it's so nice to just have some time to yourself. I didn't do anything like crazy. That's so nice. As I keep saying, we've moved into our new home. So we're still trying to kind of settle. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a squirrel squirrel nest in the loft, which we were getting rid of. So oh, it's no. been um, just been bits, doing bits. But it's so needed because then you get to Friday and you're like, oh, still got a whole weekend. That is yeah. right. Yeah. Also, Love didn't that. you think it was maybe rats? So a oh, we thought it was rats. rats. Because oh I was gosh. in the bathroom and basically we've got, the, it was running parallel to where our boiler is and then the, the bathroom. And I could just hear this scuttling Ooh. as I was brushing my teeth. I was like, no. But we've we've managed to eradicate. Did you have to do it yourself, problem. or did you have someone do it? For you? My boyfriend did it. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> you get we the didn't have to look. In. Yeah, we didn't have to go that far. Good. But <laughs> have you got some like baby squirrels? Now? Yeah. They're, well, they're nice. The next day, I saw like four baby squirrels and a big squirrel scuttling around, oh. and I felt really oh. sad. But equally, you just can't. They'll you find can't. somewhere They'll else. They'll find somewhere, somewhere else. else. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, that was my days off. <laughs> nice, but yeah, a little bit rogue. But yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, squirrels. <laughs> Did you do anything on the weekend itself then when it finally got to Saturday morning? Not really. Again, I think just kind of taking in what we need to do, finishing off gardening, which I, I is such a weird thing to be enjoying now. I never thought... I would be enjoying gardening so much, but I am. And I think because winter's coming, we've been trying to prepare yeah. it. So yeah, just doing basic things, but things that, you know, you can still relax and potter with yeah. and just It's now chill. the time of year that you have to kind of prep your spring flowers. That's what yeah. I was about to ask. Yeah. yeah. So you can get like all excited exactly. about what's to come. Yeah, queen I know. Of queen of gardening. We've yeah. been planting <laughs> loads of bulbs because that's the easiest thing, I think, to plant now. And then they'll start to sprout up in spring. So that's... How exciting. That's exciting. what exciting. we've been doing. But yeah, it's... It's big, big job. Lots of little things to do, but it was a good, it was a good long weekend. It was really nice. And the weather was good. So we were lucky. Nice. Nice mm. sunshine. India, how about you? You were in Venice. I, I was in Venice for the weekend, oh. which was amazing. Oh. Um, I chatted to someone who was local there and he said they often have like Indian summer that time of year. And we were very much blessed with beautiful sunshine. So oh. that was heavenly. It was my anniversary with my boyfriend fiance james um so yeah we made the most which was a dream and it is obviously just so romantic so beautiful hadn't been for about eight nine years um so just made the most did loads oh, and you know, tens of thousands of steps oh yeah so um, quite good about weekends exactly where you feel like you've justified all the past yes i was I about mean, to say all, the all of the gelato the pizza oh. etc um and we stayed at a gorgeous hotel called il palazzo experimental which oh, is part of the experimental yeah, group i feel like um mm. that may be on some people's radar they've got a few hotels around the world one in menorca which we went to a couple of years ago which is beautiful oh. And they just do their design really thoughtfully. Um, the food's brilliant and the cocktails are fab because they started as a cocktail group, I think. Yeah. The Henrietta Hotel yeah. is part oh, of their see. group. They got um, a couple like in Frenchy. Paris as well, haven't Yeah, they? exactly. And then Ibiza wasn't their big yes. beach club. So yes, I think that's where it started, the Experimental Beach Club. Um, and they are, they've got a restaurant in Ibiza, which I was at the Friday before. Um, nice. And <laughs> called Savaba, which is also great. And they're actually renovating a hotel at the moment in Ibiza as well so one for the new hotels list for next year Lovely. um because they just you know it's not i think you would love it from an inter interior's perspective georgina it's not just like you go in and there's some beautiful marble in the bathroom there's like amazing marble amazing tiles amazing this that and the other it's tick, just tick, tick. like yeah, yeah. I need to look it up. very chic but um very like fun and playful like you wouldn't want to have it in your own home but yeah. for a weekend it's perfect um True. so yeah it was wonderful but last night I arrived at gatwick and my suitcase didn't come back oh, with no. us so oh. i did do the tip of putting an air tag in my case, which I don't know if you guys I've heard have come across heard of that. Well, I that? don't know if I'd be so, more stressed if I knew that my yeah, bag I was somewhere I it really it out shouldn't yet. be. <laughs> Basically, so Apple do these things 
thing is called air tags, which are like a tiny, it kind of looks like a mento. And you can put it on your keys, in your suitcase, you know, on any belonging that you might lose. I think people put it on their pets as well. Um, and I bought a few earlier in the summer when I heard about lots of travel chaos happening. And so I popped on my suitcase and we we actually ended up getting to the airport a bit late. So I feel like that probably contributed to the bag not getting on the flight. Um, but usually it does give me you know, it, it's good to know like when I'm on the plane that the bag is there, etc. And yesterday we got to the luggage belt and it said it was like in Venice about an hour ago. And I was like, oh, probably isn't going to be here now <laughs> then, is it? I was like, okay, it'll probably just be on the next flight. And it has made it to Gatwick. Okay, that's good. So that's definitely reassuring yeah. because with EasyJet, which is who we flew with, flew with um, it hasn't like updated it. It hasn't updated on the system. So I feel like if I didn't have the air tag, I would be panicking about where on earth it is. Has yeah. it been stolen? I didn't know that was a thing. They're like 25 quid. Yeah. Highly recommend. Um, and so yeah, I definitely won't be flying without one of those again. That's brilliant because I think the not knowing and also things exactly. like if you don't know where it is, then you think, do I stay at the airport for yes. a bit longer? Yeah, true. Totally. Or, or actually, if it's not, if yeah, it's still exactly. in Venice, then I might and still I've go And I've heard home. about people who have gone to the airport to pick up their bag and there are like hundreds of suitcases mm and whoever's helping them can't find it and you can make it make a sound as well oh, so there's that. a hot tip for you guys who knew air yeah. tags that's but one I'm... of those things luggage I always think you you know it could happen but you're like oh I'll be fine and yeah then when exactly it happens, it's but I feel like this summer I have seen just like anecdotally people on Instagram saying how much mm. it's happened mm. so I was like I've been lucky to travel quite a lot this summer so I was like it's really it's coming for me you were prepped <laughs> yeah. you were ready yeah. so I, just, I just felt <laughs> like it was going to happen and um, maybe I kind of manifested it happening yeah. um, <laughs> but anyway so yeah wonderful weekend just with a not so wonderful end oh mm, such rubbish. a shame <laughs> have you got any recommendations for restaurants in Venice yes in case I do I do so I, when I was going people did say you know Venice is not like a region of Italy that's known for amazing food they do have chicchetti which yeah. is like their Venetian small plates or kind of like pinchos in Spain mm-hmm. where you just get nice things on bread. So we had some of those. Um, I wouldn't say any of those were kind of stand out. Had a really wonderful meal at a restaurant called Anice Stellato, mm. um, which is kind of on the north side of Venice, which was fantastic and delicious bellinis, really lovely pasta, etc. And you kind of sit on a canal. It's a much quieter part. Like it oh. felt very much like we were in the know being there. Um, so that was wonderful. Amazing gelato from a place called Suso, which I think they have a few of around Venice. And then the hotel we were staying at, Il Palazzo, fantastic restaurant there and a really cool cocktail bar as well. Oh, so those well, are my got, top yeah, three. Everything ticks off. Yeah, exactly. Ice cream, pasta and drinks. I've Perfect. never been. I've still never been. I haven't actually. It's on my list of yeah, places to go to. People yeah, I've it. only been once um, and it was brilliant. And actually, if you're going with kids, it's really good because you have the little kind of canal taxis yes, going up and down. Yeah, so it's exactly. like an above ground tube line. So, so if true. you've got little legs with you who can't manage to go too far, yeah. whilst it is a great city oh, to walk around in, yeah. actually it's so easy to just hop on so and off true. and you get a kind of day, yeah. like a travel card really. Um, and then you're going under all the bridges. So you still get so to do nice. loads yeah, it's um, really with them. Amazing. So it's really good. I've we... only done that at the Venetian in Las Vegas. <laughs> 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 the same, same. Based yeah, on I Venice. I imagine it looks exactly the same. Um, it actually does kind of look a bit it's weirdly That's I've been to hilarious. both sort of weirdly similar oh, yeah cool. there you go. my only other tip would be we did get water taxis to and from the airport which was such a treat and you feel like you're in a movie basically oh, yeah. just I'm on dreaming. a little private boat yeah. um, and yesterday we did actually pay about 30 euros more because the way that you got to our hotel wasn't the most scenic route didn't go like through the Grand Canal. Um, and so we paid him an extra 30 to take us on a more scenic route, oh. which was great, but probably resulted in my luggage being lost. <laughs> so if you win some, you lose some, basically. <laughs> worth it, maybe. Yeah. If you get it back, you could say it's worth exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, we'll yeah, wait, yeah, we'll wait. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, Georgina, what about you? What did you get up to? Uh, so I went yesterday to see the new Bassey Power Station. Amazing. Open. Amazing. How was it? Inundated. I, with people. Oh, I mean, yeah. I have <laughs> never seen busy. so many people. I was completely, I knew it'd be busy because it's be opened on Friday. Yeah. We were there on Sunday, but I had no idea how busy it was. Top tip, just That's go really to Bassey nice. Park. Just do that the first there. time. That is a good <laughs> tip yeah. though. Um, or take a bus or a tube. Um, but yeah, God, it's incredible. There are kind of two massive turbine halls and one feels quite contemporary and industrial and the other one's more 
um, in keeping with when it was originally built and restored. And it's actually really beautiful in the way that kind of the Eiffel Tower has that sort of, it's all iron, but yeah. it's, it's also kind of got like um, a majesty to it. Mm-hmm. It's really beautiful. So I would say, I guess like 75% of the shop outlets are probably up and running. There's still a few to come. Yeah. And lots of them have mm-hmm. um, branding telling you what's coming. And there's a few that don't. Um, places to eat. And um, when you go outside, there's um, they had a stage and there was someone singing and it was obviously like one of those magical autumn sunny Sundays so everyone was out and then there's a big Zara so if you're south of the river now you've got a Zara I believe Um, Laura and Florence went for BTS oh of course they did big Zara so there's more to come on okay well I won't spoil (laughs) because it is really nicely wow. fitted out so you'll get to see that on there yeah so we just wandered around but I have to say after an hour and a half we all went oh I think we need to go home like yeah. sensory <laughs> overload just wow yeah, the it, number of people it's indoor right it's indoors so and it's actually, like a shopping mall it's like a three-tier shopping mall oh, but wow. one the more contemporary hall feels mm-hmm. so dark okay so it's very cool okay. and moody you kind of feel like oh, you yeah. could be somewhere very cool in New York or something Love that. but you wouldn't want to go there on a summer's day. You okay. know, if, well, I yeah. wouldn't. It feels like quite <laughs> full on. Um, and then the more traditional one is lighter mm-hmm. um, walking around. So there's a few restaurants and bars that are kind of then open that sort of overlook the whole thing. Mm, yeah. So mm. I think I think it needs to bed in. Yeah. yeah. Um, it needs a bit of time. It needs a bit of time. Yeah. So I would say... Um, I don't know. Would I even go again before Christmas? I'm not sure. It's quite it is phenomenal. interesting. There are, like you say, there's still more to open. So there's the control mm. room, which is this bar they're opening oh, in yes, the former control room. Yeah, yeah oh, and I think that cool. looks quite sort of industrial and cool as it's, well. It, but also a bit Art Decoy. Yeah. And the queue for that was like snaking was around. Really? But I did. That's just reminded me. I feel like I. I think they're opening an ice rink for Christmas. Yes, they probably they are. are. They yes. are. So chucking everything, everything out. Everything. Yeah. everything. In fact, I might book my tickets on <gasps> yeah. lunch break. Oh, because yeah. I'm really... going to go <laughs> for the rest of the well, year. I, I, I take that back. I think I might go <gasps> just for the ice rink. <laughs> to be fair, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, I nice think that would. Yeah. 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 yeah, so okay. It would feel quite yeah. special. Stand yeah. corrected. <laughs> Me and Sherry are going to go at some stage because they're also opening like this big glass lift that goes up one of the towers. So again, I think you're meant to be able to see some incredible views. They haven't quite got an opening date for that yet but we're yeah. going to go and, and there's lots of good it. food places did you eat anything there no but there were I mean inside there are a yeah. few new ones but yeah. even outside all the ones that have been existing there for a yes. while they were suddenly so busy and oh, I thought that's it. really good for them yeah, but definitely. I did think for some of the other blocks of flats that have been there for a bit and they're probably used to kind of having this place to themselves That's almost. True. And they yeah. must have all woken up on Saturday morning and just gone, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Everyone's so arrived. You know, so it felt like, I, I don't know, I sort of thought for current residents in mm. other sections, it might feel a bit... A little bit strange. A bit but full suddenly on, they do yeah. have all like these amazing shops yeah. and eateries. Well, exactly. Yeah. exactly. They knew it and they coming. knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah, they did. I feel like I knew it was coming, but I didn't know how much of a like mm. big thing it was. Agreed, yeah. exactly. And then I saw the coming soon, all the, these lists of amazing places. Yeah. It reminds me of Cold Drops Yard. Like yeah. that's the kind of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Exactly, yeah. you know, it's cool. And I think also they're going to have probably little event stages mm-hmm. and things happening. Yeah. I think lots of pop-up festivals and 100%. stuff. So. Um, it just lends itself really well yeah. to that. And of course, you can get the boat there because there's Battersea Sea. That's true. Yeah. So actually, that would be a really nice trip if you're anywhere near one of those kind of big yeah. Uber, Uber ferries. Yeah, they, they are now, are. I guess, um, aren't they? You yeah. come yeah. down. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. Well, I went to Grimsby this weekend, so I haven't really got too much to add. I went home, saw my granddad, had the obligatory fish and chips. But yeah, Aww. had a lovely old time. But yeah, just no, relax. Nothing, so special. nothing too glamorous. Although, actually, I did... On Friday evening before we got the train, I went to the RA and I hadn't been there for ages. Oh, nice. um, they had a Milton Avery exhibition that was closing on Sunday. And we, you, you know, when you're like, you see there's something on it, a gallery or, you yeah. know, a museum and you're like, oh, we must go. And then mm. you never actually get round to it. We went and yeah, had a really nice time. Aww. So I would recommend it. It's closed now. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of annoyed you said that because I had that on my to-do list and I'm a member of the RA. Uh, so I really had no excuse. Done. It was... Anyway. Really, it's very, very good. But also, Jose Pizarro has now taken over loads of the restaurants and bars throughout the RA. Oh, so I haven't actually cool. been since that happened earlier this year. So I would recommend just going into the poster bar downstairs, which has got all the old summer exhibition posters all over the walls. So it looks really cool. But he's serving like 
tapas and sort of Amazing. tortilla of the day mm. and nice sherry oh, so nice. like yeah nice glasses of wine really so nice. if you're in that sort Great of piccadilly yeah. area definitely Ooh. and even if you don't want to go see an exhibition i'd recommend popping in for a glass of sherry it was... it's a real oasis as well yeah. isn't it? you walk in that courtyard and i think straight away you're just like yeah, oh, calm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was lovely. Yeah. So yeah, that was my weekend. Chilled weekend. Nice. Ooh. Right, telly chat time. Becky, I know you've got something to recommend. I have, and it was one of those things that actually I just saw it advertised once, and I thought I'm going to give it a go. It's called Wreck on BBC. BBC um, Three. I think it's BBC yeah. Three. I was about to say I don't think it's on the normal one too. It's BBC Three, and I I just happened to watch it on iPlayer and got so into it. So. Basically, it is about a group of kind of young people on a cruise ship. Um, They're performers. And uh, one of the boys goes onto the cruise ship to search for his sister who went missing on the cruise. Um, And they say in it that, you know, cruise ships are these these things that are completely unpoliced and anything can happen at sea and nobody actually ever knows about it. Um, But the concept of it, it's quite sort of... It's very um, young and colourful and it's a bit... It's very Halloween-y. It's a good thing oh, for Halloween. Okay. Um, but it's a dark comedy. So I, I've only watched two episodes. I am into it. But it's basically this person dressed as a duck that is going around taking people out one by one. Um, and <laughs> exactly. So it's no sort of coming. funny. But it's actually really violent and dark. So it's it's a weird one. I'm not sure where I am on it yet. But I do equally want to see it through to the end I'm quite hooked I think also because it's a young cast it feels a bit fresh Mm. yeah it's it's strange but I recommend it if you want something (laughs) a bit different certainly a bit different (laughs) like I'm not sure where it's going I I have seen good reviews of it yeah it's it's interesting and there's there's all sorts going on this ship so the second you think you've solved one thing you then uncover a big drug ring so there's all sorts going on but I do quite like the concept that Mm. nothing is policed on a cruise ship and they're just out yeah. see for months on end sounds a little bit like the white lotus it but is not. Yeah. the and second think, series of well, that's coming out it's later it's we all know i love well. the oh, white lotus yeah. i can't decide whether i liked it or not i know it we, took me halfway through yeah, and then i loved I, it i wasn't gonna watch it and my friend said you've got to finish it yeah, yeah. i'm so glad i did yeah. because yeah. actually it was brilliant because it's, last it's very conflicted on this but i thought it was one of the best things i've said really? i really genuinely enjoyed it i, I thought still have that the theme tune oh i know that's what i hated the music yeah but it, I'm excited for that. When is that coming back? They're up? just like coming in October. Oh, Still, even oh, today, I got a press release. They haven't said the exact date. It's like, only like two on, weeks left. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. that Sky Atlantic. It was. Yeah, yeah. I do yeah. quite. I liked it. It was a bit edgy. Yeah, it, yeah. Made, I like those things that put you on edge. Yeah, they make you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, or totally. you just didn't know what was going to happen. No, yeah. Yeah. It was and so great original. Yeah. Like, Another one that made me feel uncomfortable, but I think season two is coming out. Is Industry? Did anybody watch? Oh, that? I love oh, that. It's out. You can watch on iPlay already. Brilliant. So if that was my tro- it was between wreck and that oh, so shall i okay. watch that next oh you yes. should it was you really need to watch good season one yeah. okay okay so yeah. several seasons. it's also a bit like anxiety inducing oh yeah like, i felt watch. really like oh no yeah. don't Stress. do that sort of thing yeah, when yeah, they're yeah, putting yeah. themselves yeah. in really Definitely. awkward situations yeah. I mean, it's, it's very stress inducing yeah. kind of like white lotus okay yeah. right. and I maybe need to wreck as well and maybe wreck yeah. Yeah. And yeah, with yeah, the yeah. giant duck it's good i do recommend it okay India, have you got anything to I say? I haven't been watching any kind of out of the ordinary TV. That's fine. <laughs> um, but I have been making my way slowly but surely through a great book called Cleopatra and Frankenstein. Um, it's by a British American author called Coco Mellers. I actually randomly met her um, on a trip to LA earlier this year because she was a mutual friend of someone and she was like house sitting and we were staying at the, in the pool house. Sounds very glamorous. Yeah, it's good. Sounds so LA. Um, and I was like, oh, what do you do? She's like, I'm an author. And I was like, oh, nice. Um, but it seems to be quite like a fashion girl book. Like it's got a very beautiful cover mm-hmm. and it's about a couple called Cleo and Frank. Hence why it's called Cleopatra and Frankenstein because when they meet, they call each other those names. Um, and it's like a messy, gritty New York based love story it's got a fantastic opening and she's she's a beautiful beautiful writer and you know now that I've met her I don't know if I don't know if you ever have this if you read a book with someone or by someone that you've met and you're like how have you come up with this like it just kind of brings it to life more and I'm like read every page I'm like you've just written this so beautifully like how have you done this so it's really um I would say it's like an enjoyable read but it's a messy love story with kind of 
entangled relationships and sex and drugs and all of the kind of naughty New York things and it analyzes the relationships with each other, with parents, with friends, etc. And she delves very deeply into all of their friendship group as well and like the other characters that feature in the book. So it's not purely just about the main couple. Um, but I'm reading it before I go to bed at night, which means I probably do about 10 pages a day. Yeah. So yeah. it's taken me quite a while. Um, and I've got it as a hardback, which I feel like I then I'm not kind of... You can't take I it on don't the tube, yeah. etc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I am really enjoying it. And I've seen lots of other people enjoy it. So yeah. I follow her on Instagram. And it is being made into a TV show as well. Perfect. So it's going to say, it sounds like one. it lends itself yes, to that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure it will have an amazing cast, etc. Um, so yeah. Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellers. That sounds would really recommend. good. Yeah, I love those sort of multi sort yeah, of narrative definitely. type stories. And I think I usually read thrillers and things and it's quite good for me to read a different kind of book. You just sound like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a, have Scary a really fresh. Scary murdering people. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like a, a messy love story. Lovely. Nice. Georgina, how about you? Um, TV or books? I well, know. <laughs> I'm reading um, a book called The Promise. I can't remember who it's by, but I'm just at the beginning. Um, and uh, I feel like it's going to unravel. It's all based in South Africa and it's going... Oh, I know. It won the Pulitzer or the Man Booker Prize Man Booker. this year. Yeah. yeah, I know exactly Yeah, so I feel like I've gone quite highbrow for me. Go for um, it. It's my book club. <laughs> Wasn't my choice. I'd yeah. probably recommend it something completely different. Um, but it's um, a bit like you were saying, India, it's that kind of five to ten pages a night and yeah. it has no chapters oh it's oh. continuous oh wow it has punctuation but it has no chapters and i find that really challenging yeah, because you yeah. don't really know when to stop yeah and also <laughs> whenever you have a chapter break it's kind of a yeah. natural and that's the end of that bit yeah. and here's yeah. a new yeah, scene mm. whereas the scenes roll but oh wow it sort of takes you a moment to go oh right sorry who am i with and where are we now yeah so i'm just finding the whole kind of format quite yeah difficult as well as there's about three characters whose names all begin with m and have about six letters in so i'm just finding like the really <laughs> basic side of it quite difficult i think i need to draw a family i hate that when you tree or something yeah, like it's, yeah. yeah oh, but it is it is really well written and the story is getting very beefy Ooh. so um Ooh. yeah um but what i'm watching is far less highbrow <laughs> i'm watching <laughs> on apple tv bad sisters which is oh i'm i don't know i'm why desperate I to see this yeah because i was so excited when it was announced yeah, yeah. Quite a good car yeah so sharon yeah. horgan who wrote catastrophe which is my favorite which is brilliant with rob, De- rob yeah. delaney isn't yeah. it um she is writer director main character yeah. and it's Oh my God, how many of them are? I think there's four sisters, maybe five. And one of them is married to, well, they call him the prick. That is their (laughs) collective term for him. Um, And he is, I think he's called John Paul, JP. And he is, to all of them individually, he has a horrible moment or ongoing relationship or he has something on one of them or he's done something Mm -hmm. to one of them. He is... um, on the surface, this utterly charming, charismatic man, but you don't really scratch too right. deep to get to what he's really about, which is the nastiest piece of work. Ooh. So Lives ab- emotionally to abusive mm. to his wife, who's Amory Duff, who plays I was about to the say kind of simpering, it. downtrodden. She's like every episode, you just see this woman getting kind of smaller and Ooh. smaller she's and a smaller. She's such a good actress. Oh, she's like, oh my God, she, you just feel for her so much, but you kind of want to shake her as well mm. and go, oh my God. And she tries to do things, um, and it's it's actually really disturbing because it's a really clever portrayal of of how somebody reduces someone else mm. through that emotional abuse. But then in that Sharon Horgan way, it's a dark comedy. It's bloody funny, <laughs> and the way uh, the honesty between the sisters and just how they have that kind of unconditional love for each other. So they can just talk and mm. say what they want and anything. And I and I think there's a lovely liberation in that mm, having yeah. that kind of relationship in your life where you can just say what you want and mm. know even if someone does hate you for it you you know you'll always get yeah. over it and get past it yeah um, so the the portrayal of these sisters and their lives and their relationship and it is very complicated mm. um, and it's really messy um, but it's incredibly heartwarming and it is bloody funny. 
it's great. It's a, it's good fun and it's excruciating. Um, and yeah, it touches on some pretty dark themes. Oh, so. I might have to get Sounds Apple bad. just for that. Yeah. I don't oh, yeah. have it. I mean, every podcast I feel like I'm like, just get Apple TV. Oh, really? Yeah, really Netflix, that good, but yeah. genuinely. Well, I, I mean, the last three or four series I've watched was Blackbird, Slow Horses, um, Bad Sisters. Um, I was thinking about starting Physical. Oh, with yeah. Rosie is that the same? Like same. Apple. Yeah. yeah. And because the morning it, show as well. The morning show. I'm, I'm sort of halfway through. That. I dip in and out of that one. Yeah. So yeah, it's really good quality. And yeah. then also lots of original movies are yeah. coming out of there now as well. Mm, maybe I'll bite the bullet. Too. You've just, sold me, your team. Or if you get a new phone through Apple, you get like a year's oh, free really? yeah, subscription or something do like that. You? So if you do need oh, an upgrade. Good. Yeah. I actually do need an upgrade. There so there we go. I think also, I don't know for sure, so don't quote me on this, but I think as subscriptions go, it's not a massive it's one. It's 6.99 or something. I think. So it's similar to Netflix, yeah. 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 I mean, I know when you've got four or five on the go, yeah, it's a bit like, Ooh, but, yeah. Yeah. but it's worth it. Definitely. Sounds worth it just for that. Yeah. yeah. So, lots of TV chat. Thank you. <laughs> Let's move on to some reader questions. So they've got quite a few fashion ones, which is excellent because you're here. Oh, in the hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Someone's actually said packing recommendations for a long weekend in Rome in October, but oh, let's substitute with that. that with uh, <laughs> Venice. Venice. <laughs> Yeah, what did so you take? I was actually really proud of my packing for this yeah. trip, which is not <laughs> often something that I can say. Um, I mean, it was warm, so obviously check out the weather before you go. But I do think around this time of year, even if it's warm in the day, it does typically drop at night. Um, so what I brought, I mean, I can talk you through Please all of do. my packing. Yeah. Um, so on Friday when we were traveling, I knew that we'd be traveling, but then we would be like getting a boat. Like I wanted to look nice in my traveling. So went for like a more loose fitting jean, pair of jeans with some trainers um, and a shirt and then a blazer and I was like I can wear it was a neutral color blazer yeah. so I thought you know I can wear this across the whole weekend um, and then in my suitcase I took a dress um, like a summery dress but then some cardigans maybe one or two cardigans to go with um, a big like warm gilet that I could throw on every throw over everything at night and then I actually grabbed a like waistcoat that matched the blazer because I was like that works for a more smart evening outfit compare it with the jeans um, and that was pretty much everything I packed clothing wise so everything like worked yeah. together um so that was like a couple of pairs of bottoms a dress and a few different top options I always bring a tank top with me as well because I feel like they go with everything look very chic with a cardigan hopefully yeah. <laughs> um, and then shoes wise just a pair of trainers a pair of sandals because it was warm and um a pair of like nicer kind of block hill sandals mm. that I could wear at night but still comfy to walk in Amazing. so that sounds like a good... Is that helpful? I yeah. Hope so. And how many nights were you there That was for? two nights. Yeah, no, I think that seems that like... So, yeah, it was, mostly, cool. it was mostly neutrals yeah. and everything worked together. Sort of so, a yeah. modular outfit. Yeah. Exactly, order. exactly. Um, just well praying planned. it comes back. Yeah, it will. <laughs> That's what I was it thinking will. when you said that. You really planned it. Someone's also... I was going to interrupt, but I was like, no, 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 I'll wait. Um, where can you buy good cardigans? You mentioned you took two. I do you. think Cezanne is brilliant for yeah, cardigans. This is a Cezanne one. one. It looks very soft. It's really soft. They have this in like 30 different colours or something ridiculous. It's We've both got it. Yeah. Yeah. I've got it in yeah. brown. Yeah, it's, oh, it's really nice. so brown. nice. Yeah, yeah. and it goes so nice. Yeah, yeah exactly. I've got the, like, the beige kind Gorgeous. of slightly peachy colour. Yeah, yeah, so nice. So Cezanne is 100% a go-to. And then another one that I absolutely love is the American Vintage. Oh, yeah, I like that. Zabidou Cardigan mm. is called. And it's... Like every time I wear it, I get stopped in the street. Really? That's how it looks softer than it is, mm -hmm. I will say. Um, <laughs> but it's just everything you want in a cardigan. And again, I've got like a biscuity color, like you mentioned. I actually have a light gray as well. One of them's in my suitcase too. Oh, um, yeah. um, Don't so, worry. So, I will stop talking about it now. <laughs> um, but those would be my top two for cardigans. Wait, you've got some good shrimps ones, haven't you? Or did you I actually rented those. Oh, yes. See. But they do have, I love the shrimps cardigans. Those are more kitsch, I would say. Yeah. Um, and they there's actually a good sale on at Flannels for Ooh, with, if you know. want a shrimps cardigan. Yeah. That, I do want one. Yeah. Either of you, do you have any packing tips for sort of autumn weekends away? I think always um, try and like wear your heaviest things because yes. actually I had totally. a, um, not to harp on about lost luggage, but I did <laughs> have a suitcase lost when I went to Ibiza for a three night holiday. And yeah. for me, it was lost on the way out, which oh, was no. that's way worse. Yes, yeah. so much worse. Um, so immediately I got some money from my um, insurance. Mm -hmm. I think Amex, they like wired, like straight away. Yeah, here oh, you go. So I went to Ibiza Town shopping, which was really hard. Um, <laughs> but I then... Um, 
did get reunited with my suitcase on the last day. Yeah. But ever since then, when I go on a city break or a mm-hmm. short trip, I always take hand luggage because I just can't yeah. bear the thought of it yeah, happening definitely. again. No, but this so is then going I would always like say rethink. wear like your heaviest yeah. coat mm. or your cardigan or whatever yeah. because you know you can always just put it over your lap on the plane or whatever. Can't yeah. You? Yeah. yeah totally. And then get the smaller things packed yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Becky? I always think a good dress. Yeah. Something actually with long sleeves at this time of year, but something where mm. you can still get a bit of a breeze. You've got some air, you know, a bit of coolness, but you're still warm. You're no. still covered, I think. Yeah. That's quite... I think this time of year that. as well, like a longer trouser, which you could wear with a pointy heel at night or with trainers mm. in the day, and it's much more casual. I think that's what, yeah. I'm, what I'm reaching for a lot the at the moment. Yeah. yeah. The um, and then we've also, you've got some boots, haven't you? What colour <laughs> knee-high boots are best to invest in? Yeah, That's a great Ooh. question. Oh. Well, I last year I invested in Paris, Texas, black um, crocodile boots. <gasps> I did! Um, <laughs> and do you know what? I don't regret it for a yeah. moment. Um, they have been amazing. I went for the lower heel, so yeah. I can, I mean, I can cycle to work in them, actually. I think that's what Are they a stiletto um, heel? Yes, yeah, they are. Amazing. And I have had to have the stiletto heel replaced okay. multiple times and I actually oh, had the really? front pointy toe reinforced with oh, a half leather, Very like a, yeah. a grip. Yeah. It's not leather, it's plastic. Have you I know, I've had that yeah. done before. Like, it just gives it a bit more grip, well, doesn't it? And also <laughs> you can, on. like pavements around London or probably mm. anywhere to be fair, mm. you can catch that pointy yeah. leather bit yeah. really easily and then it starts mm. ripping up. So mm. just, you can't see it from any angle, but you, mm. you yeah. just feel it. And then when you walk, it's better. So, but I would love a pair of, I'm torn actually, between going kind of, just slightly off white, knee high. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Leather or suede? Probably have to be leather because suede is yeah. not really going to last long. Or a kind of more classic seventies tan. Yeah. Yes. I could leather. see you in a pair of yeah. those. What's yeah. your advice? Yeah. Into? Yeah. 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 I do think there's like nothing chicer than a long cream boot with like mm. a cream skirt or something. Mm. I feel like um, the boots that Hodge and Charlotte have, the Paris Texas ones, yeah. those are amazing. Tan, I do love, but I feel like it has to work with what's in your wardrobe. Yeah. Like I don't think that would work perfectly with mine. I'm really keen on a pair of like dark brown, almost like a burgundy, like a a oh, yeah. like dark a, like red wine yeah, yeah. color lovely I feel like that actually goes with a lot of stuff as well yeah. and I don't know whether that's a slightly more modern take on a on a on different sort of tone of brown yeah yeah, yeah. I've seen any brands doing that especially Dear Francis well. have an amazing pair I like this um they're kind of croc as well and actually I do think they're quite comfortable yeah um, so yeah, those would be top of my wish list at the moment. But I feel like any of those colours we listed would work, yeah. which I don't know is the most helpful answer. No, but... but I think what you're saying, like think about what you already yeah, have exactly. in your wardrobe and maybe yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I do think a black, like a, I have some patent black ones which are quite harsh. Mm. Like the shiny black mm. is quite a lot. Yeah, and so you can't really wear that with mm. like a more neutral outfit. Yeah. I think if they were a black leather or something, just something a little bit softer that would work better. So I feel like they're not as versatile as I necessarily thought they would be. But I bet they make a statement when you do They do them. make a statement, exactly. Um, and also I think if you want to wear tights as well, yeah. like I don't think tights with cream necessarily yeah, looks that tricky. great. Um, I think you'd want to go for like as light a denier as possible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do think we're going to see a lot of cool knee-high boots this year i think so becky would you ever get some yeah well, i got a pair of black ones actually from h&m which i'd wanted for ages this was last year but as you were saying they go with a lot but they are quite heavy yeah um so for ages i've wanted a cream pair cream or white yeah um because i like to wear a lot of dresses in the winter yeah. and i just yeah, think actually definitely. they automatically go with yeah. any dress there's actually a really got. gorgeous pair of brown ones from um jigsaw mm. they do come in black as well but the brown it just looks like a very versatile brown yeah yeah um, that's the thing i think it's just got to go with as yeah. you said what you yeah, wear exactly um but yeah i'd really like to get some cream i ones. think you'd actually look amazing in the brown jigsaw one i think yeah. you'd look really cool in a chunkier pair like no, a ganny think, one oh, or yeah, something i've got some russell bromley sort yeah. of ones that yeah of yeah. quite like the Ganny ones. Yeah. Although Sherry got those Ganny ones um, yeah. last week and her heels were absolute ribbons. Oh, really? By the time she got into the office. They're like more welly rubber ones. Yeah, yeah. I so. actually have those and I wore like 
they're what I wear on a morning walk yeah. every single day throughout the winter and they were fine oh, really? so maybe they, they just take maybe. a bit of wearing it I was going to say yeah right next time she yeah. you need the compi do you need yeah, two pairs yeah, of socks exactly. but yeah she was uh, luckily she had some slip-ons under her desk that she oh, could no. change into but she was like oh no that's really so awesome yeah. Yeah. Just I do feel like in. yeah at the beginning of winter when you switch over to boots oh, yeah. my heels are like what are you doing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a few more lifestyle questions now. So we were chatting about this sofa, which we've spoken about many, many times. But obviously, Becky, you're potentially I'm, in the market for a new sofa. I'm really in the market for a new sofa. So, yeah. Georgina, any advice as our interiors editor? Well, it's so interesting because I got a, a DM on Instagram. Um, it was either last night or this morning. I can't remember that. From from someone who obviously follows Sheila Lutz, asking yeah. me with a picture of their living room, like, why well, need a different sofa? And actually, we did do a feature on the site oh, it must have been about a year and a half ago, maybe, but it was kind of 10 sofa brands that cover yeah. all budgets. Mm-hmm. So definitely worth looking that up because actually we really did. In fact, it might have been more than 10, but all the kind of the big ones, but also some of yeah. maybe you haven't heard of yeah. or depending on your budget. Mm-hmm. But um, in my house, I've got um, one by Swift, oh, which yeah. is oh, actually yeah. super comfy and really well made oh, and goodness. seems to tolerate the dog jumping on it when yeah, she's good. not invited and things <laughs> like that. So so I think if you're going more budget, mm-hmm. um, that's me. That's, yeah. that's a really, really good one. But it's good to know because I know it is, yeah. lots of sofas can be thousands mm. and thousands of pounds. So I think if you don't have that budget, you are then like, well, which of these other companies yeah. are actually and also good. a lot of the time that you can't always go and try them because a lot of them are online yeah. only so then you want to know what is actually yeah. comfortable yeah and also some of them you've got to wait maybe 12 weeks yeah, yeah. Oh, um, and there yeah. are some brands um like swift like made like those mm-hmm. kind of ones where they they do have stock and then you can get it and also they'll you can do returns so if yeah. you mm-hmm. get it and you can have it by the weekend and then you think you know what well, actually no it's easy to send it back they'll okay. just they'll just pick it up so um and then there are you so i got my other sofa from a company in Bassey called Loungin without Loungin g they're similar to a company called the sofa and chair company and what you can do with those is you can actually choose from their own range or you can design it kind of Ooh, yourself so you can lovely. look at what they've got and then you can tweak you know make the armrest a bit thicker or oh, thinner that's good or if you've got a tricky oh, and size high base. Yeah. yeah or may maybe have it as a fixed back or a loose back or yeah. whatever you want to do so there's quite a lot it's worth exploring because lots of range lots of brands will do little bespoke ranges and mm. they don't always end up as more because i think the the frame is quite standard yeah so you're adding little details Fine. um mm-hmm. but yeah i would look at the um the feature that we did that yeah. listed all the I remember the you doing that. I was reading it at the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I remember it too. Where's yours from? Uh, so we've actually got a vintage one oh, that okay. we got uh, from somewhere in Brighton that okay. is 1960s. But the guy who we bought it from at the time, he's like, this has lasted since the 60s because sofas were made to last that, well, decades exactly. back yeah. then. So yeah, the leather, we occasionally have to just give it a nice bit of a buff. But no, it's... Uh, Amazing. Yeah, yeah and actually job. to go around some antiques fairs, vintage yeah. fairs, um, shops, things like that is great. But I would say massive caveat, if you are reupholstering yeah. or redoing the springs yeah. or anything, you are going to be paying the same as a new mm-hmm. I'm sure. I'm mm-hmm. yeah, 100% sure. So just to make sure. Yeah. Definitely. Because yeah. I have thought that before. You can sometimes, I think on eBay, you can see these amazing sofas that need a bit mm. of love. But I'm like, even if the sofa's £100, you might then yeah. spend thousands. Yeah. 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 yeah, because yeah. you need about 12 metres or something yeah. for a yeah, sofa. It's crazy. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got a maker and sun sofa? I do sofa? have a maker and sun sofa, which was a like lockdown purchase basically um which i absolutely love i have zero so regrets it's gorgeous. Um, but it was obviously very expensive and i think they've gone up by about 20 30 percent now oh, so really? i'm glad i bought it when yeah. i did yeah. um i did do extensive sofa research mm. read every sheer lux article about sofas and every other article <laughs> everywhere um and they at the time because we were buying it in lockdown all of the furniture shops were shut, but Maker and Son did actually have this mobile, they have, they still have it, a little mobile showroom. So yes. they basically come to you. So I was like, okay, well, at least I know that it is really, really comfortable. Um, and I spoke to people that had them. And one of my kind of top criteria was that it would be washable in case we spill anything yeah. on it or if we mm. wanted to change it as well. They do different covers. Oh, so we could get a new cover made or we could buy one from them. Um, and when I have had disasters like spilling tea on the sofa <laughs> mm-hmm. or whatever, um, you know, melted bits of chocolate, um, <laughs> it does just go in the washing machine, which is amazing. So yeah. I do really love it. It's 
you know, in their adverts, if anyone hasn't seen them, we've probably been served an ad at some point, um, but they're like beautifully plump, mm. um, which they do look like when you plump them up, but they do look pretty relaxed and more kind of squashed yeah. um, other times, which I really don't mind. Like, I was say, that I've always matches thought, like the vibe of the room. I've always thought they look so comfy, probably it's for insanely that reason. comfy. Yeah, like when I've been away for lengths of time or when I'm hungover, I just like crave the sofa. <laughs> <Sitting there. laughs> um, and as we get into kind of nesting season, mm. I'm very, very happy we have it. Um, but we had a whole disaster because it didn't fit in our flat. Oh, like it what? fitted, it fitted in the room, but we couldn't even we couldn't get it to the oh, room no. because oh, we have we live in a flat up like a tight staircase I so they brought the it in table. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they had to take it away and then have it made into two sections oh, wow. anyway it was a total saga and we just had cushions on the floor for about three weeks oh, no. um but they do do that because every most of their sofas are kind of made bespoke but i would consider that for sure when you're yeah, wearing a sofa yeah. i mean that it is fits. the same when we moved and um the removal company had to basically break our double bed oh, um yeah. the frame oh, to get it up and then kind of reinforce it again to yeah. make sure yeah, there's always exactly. one item of furniture that doesn't yeah. it's just the staircases but that's yeah. what um because with swift it comes in boxes yeah yes, and i actually so put ours clever. together um myself and ten yeah because it's, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's modular yeah i mean it's that's insanely good and it is so comfy. good yeah yeah, I and also, it's a bit of a copy actually of the Maker and Son. Oh, I would yeah. definitely <laughs> recommend. Um, I've got an armchair from IKEA, like the Farlov shape, which is okay. quite a nice shape. Um, comes in a sofa, armchair, etc. And then I got a cover for it from a Scandinavian brand called Bems, oh, B E M Z, and they literally specialize in covers for IKEA sofas, but in like really gorgeous linens, in boucles. Oh, in like all like hundreds of different shades Ooh. so have a look at that oh that's great oh, that's, that's, really yeah, cool. that's, that's, that's reminded me of another scandinavian brand oh, yeah. called melly melly oh yes really oh, nice their that sofas stuff. are really cool and yeah. if you want like a pattern something a bit yeah. different yeah. and then they have the most gorgeous which i would love to own um these kind of ottomans yes. but it's Ooh. you know the soho home um sort of dressing table store that's like a little know, wavy so, yeah. flower yeah, yeah they've bigger. got Yes, you're so oh, right. Oh my God. And they do yeah. a polka dot and then they do plain linens. They do velvets and they have sofas, headboards. I mean, it's really nice. It's I think really they've got cool. a showroom in Deptford, kind of Southeast London. Yeah. Yeah. So you can go and see it. Um, but yeah. check out their website. I mean, Becky are like, right. Yeah. That sounds marking good. all these things. Yeah, <laughs> good to know. I mean, yeah, no, that all sounds good tips. Because Your chair that you're saying is Ikea, I didn't realise was Ikea. So there you yeah. go. It yeah, yeah, it's really good. And... They have like designers gold linen and really beautiful stuff. I mean, you can end up paying like double yeah. what you paid for the item of furniture, <laughs> um, but it is quite clever. Yeah. And then it's, you could also it, yeah. have like different, if you wanted, we could have different seasonal colors. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. There That's cool. It's like the kind of the shops that is it Superfront where they yes, um, kind exactly. of pimp up an IKEA kitchen yeah. with handles and yeah, different doors. Definitely. Ooh. So you just buy the carcass from oh, IKEA yeah. and then you it's switch so it all out. Just snaz it up. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've got a, a life career question here. When do you know it's time? to leave your job Ooh. I can answer <laughs> that one yeah go on then India um, I am currently in my notice period so oh. I actually handed my notice I've, I've worked full time at an amazing company for the last six years um, and I'm going to be doing my own thing from end of December time that's exciting which is very yeah, exciting. exciting thanks I'm really excited about new chapter I was 10 30 so be like new age new life nice. new year oh, um awesome. so it's all happening but I digress um so for me it was a really difficult decision because I did love or I do love my job love the people etc but I think it was more things pulling me away mm-hmm. rather than anything kind of pushing me away and I've always maintained and this is how I've kind of made the decision to move jobs a couple of times but if there's no one that you kind of look up to and you're like oh I really want their job and you don't have something you're like working towards I think that's quite a good indicator Mm -hmm. that maybe you're not in the right place and for me I did always have that up until this year and then I was like okay I think I probably plateaued with where I can go um and you know I've been working on my own thing on the side for a while so that was like an obvious next step for me and it was more a case of when's that happening which I appreciate obviously this person asking the question may not have but it doesn't have to be like you are so desperate to leave and absolutely hating it I think it can be you know is this taking me in the direction I want to be Mm. going in have I plateaued in my learning I think that's super important because I think as humans we just crave like that learning and doing something that you're not engaged Mm. with or learning from um I think is quite demotivating and for me I also found like 
I found that I wasn't feeling myself as much and I wasn't feeling like a desire to really like get up and go and Mm. do my job um so those were all quite big telltale signs and I think also some people I don't know if it's from like the older generation that we look at but there's more of a like you know you have to stay and you have to kind of stick it out mindset Mm -hmm. and millennials and gen z's probably get a bad rap for chopping and changing Mm -hmm. more but I think it is really important to know your worth know your value know what makes you happy and if all of those things cannot be found in your job then it's probably not the best mm. place to be no i think that's that's yeah i'd advice. agree with that all yeah that. the question was when do you know it's time i mean like you say if you're very miserable all the time yeah, there, totally. then you probably know now yeah exactly you know, that doesn't like you say and you, you know it could reason. be that you're working in a really toxic place and then probably that isn't the right place yeah. for you yeah. um but i don't think it has to be as black and white as yeah. that as well mm. that's interesting becky any advice yeah, I'd agree on all of that, but I and I guess it depends on what your goals are. But I, I mean, certainly for me, it would be if there wasn't enough progression, and yeah. I think that is the key thing. I think if you don't feel like you can grow, you're immediately going to lose yeah, motivation, totally. and then yeah. that immediately yeah. circles back to you probably not being happy. So I think knowing you've got growth is a huge, huge thing, and I think also knowing if you're not excited, if you feel like every day is a slog, and yeah. you're just you're not excited by what you're doing, then I think you really need to be questioning things, or you need to be finding what it is you can make your niche someone actually said recently like you need to find your niche and that that's your thing and that's what you should zone in on and I think if you don't feel you can do that wherever you are then Mm. that's probably a sign yeah good point Georgina have you got well I just any words of wisdom (laughs) I mean not really over and above that I suppose the only thing is I feel like it's not all about what you can give them it's about what they can give Mm. you and it has to work both ways yeah so you need to be somewhere where th- your skills are appreciated and you can develop them. And equally, um, I think that if 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 none of that's happening and, and it's not going both ways, then, yeah. I mean, I think you said before we started the podcast, Becky, that if someone's asking the question, that also says quite a lot. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It can be really it scary. Yeah, it's re- it is really scary to but, leave a job. But if- sometimes, yeah, maybe it is giving, you know, giving the person or whoever... A reason to have a think about what yeah. if this isn't mm. making me happy I don't necessarily have to go and do the same thing yeah, somewhere totally. else is there anything else and I, I think doing? depending on the relationship that you have with your manager mm. it could be a conversation exactly I was gonna say it doesn't that have well. to be that's a, a, it we're, we're drawing a line exactly. I'm moving on and there's probably more there yeah more opportunity mm. there than you might think at first it yeah. can feel like a brick yeah. wall but actually a com- few conversations can Let's go see. quite a long way. Agreed. Definitely worth having the conversation first. Mm. And then finally, another shopping question. Somebody said, where are good places to shop in London that might not be, you know, the obvious places? Where do you... Well, Becky, don't go to Battersea Power yeah, Station. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> on the Battersea Power Station notes, maybe not there no. immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Becky? Well, mine's an odd one because people are probably going to say that's so busy. But I have been um, to Covent Garden before mm. early, I'd say, like mm-hmm. 10 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it is so blissful in comparison mm. to the busyness of Oxford Street, Regent Street. If you go sort of the back end as if you're, you know, uh, Piccadilly way and then you go backwards to Covent Garden and you come out by the end of the stories in that section. Yeah. It's really nice. I mean, obviously it gets busy, but it's a lovely quieter place and Mm. often they've got more stock um and sometimes the christmas lights there are really nice really nice and if you head down towards seven dars there are a few kind of little little um, brands that you haven't always heard of yeah which is is nice you feel like you're discovering things yeah Yeah. all those cobbled streets it's just it Mm. feels it feels busy but it doesn't feel horrendous you know it's it feels manageable no oxford street it's no (laughs) oxford street from there Some of the kind of pokier streets of Soho actually have some really yeah, lovely shops. Really nice yeah, really yeah. um, Like there's an American vintage there. Yeah. The Alex Eagle shop is there. Yeah. Oh yeah, I always cool look places. in yeah. at night That's walking That's a browsing past. Yeah. situation, yeah. I also love around Westbourne Grove and Notting Hill. Yeah. Um, there's some really lovely shops there like Reformation, Free People, Cezanne on Westbourne Grove, um, Diptyque. Aesop, all those nice places. Yeah. And that's usually quite quiet and civilised. Yeah. Lovely. I think it's just picking your time. Yeah. Like Becky said, if yeah. you can, you know, if that's going to be your mission, set your alarm, get up and be there with your coffee ready to <laughs> yeah. go at like 9.45. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I also think just like do your research, check what yeah. shops you actually want to go to mm. and kind of have an idea. And then actually you can get around everything pretty quickly. Yeah, have a yeah. plan. But yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, no, I would just say adding to Soho for you. I think, yeah. yes, a lot of them do close at seven. So yes, you could, so if you did get there for, say, yeah. six, you could maybe have a dipping and then go somewhere nice mm. to eat. Amazing. Thank you so much for that, ladies. And yeah, thank you for watching and listening. If you like that, please do uh, review, like, subscribe, tell your friends, like the comments below. And yeah, we will see you next time. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.